T-minus 15 seconds. This digital and present foot. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And lift off. Lift off, let's go! On Wednesday, we saw a successful rocket launch of another SpaceX rocket, the Falcon 9, marking its 100th time doing so. That's right, out of the 103 orbital missions that SpaceX has been on, they've used the Falcon 9 rocket now 100 times successfully without any issues. Now, of course, there's been some canceled launches, but there's been no catastrophes, no blowups. This is a major advancement and really good news in the industry. On board those rockets were 60 Starlink satellites. Phase one of the Starlink network is now complete. But a lot of the questions I've gotten in the comments have revolved around when do you think it's gonna be available in the southern latitudes of the United States? I've always said next coming months, so be patient. This mission marks that ability. So once they get this formation in place, we're now gonna be able to service the southern latitudes. So I expect more invites to open up. The other great news is we continue to see SpaceX committing to sustainability and reusing parts. Now this mission marks the first time that we've seen a booster used twice. We're reusing the boosters now and it was successful as you just saw. Now we're also reusing other parts of the rocket as well and the payload. So there is a payload shroud where he reused those now five times. So that's 5X for the payload shrouds. And this marks the second time that we've reused fairings. Along with recovery, we're seeing SpaceX really launch out a lot of things rather quickly. There's been 16 launches in 2021. That represents a cadence of one launch every nine days. However, in the last 33 days, we've seen six launches and that represents one launch every five days. And with polar satellites launching soon, it won't be long before Elon and Starlink and SpaceX have the entire world covered and we can be surfing that no matter where we are. Stephen Clark of Spaceflight Now reports, first phase of SpaceX Starlink network nears completion with Falcon 9 launch. The launch of 60 more Starlink satellites Wednesday from Cape Canaveral could give SpaceX enough spacecraft to complete the first layer of the privately funded global internet network but the company shows no signs of slowing up as it launch cadence increases in the summer. A tabulation by Jonathan McDowell, an astronomer for Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics and a widely respected tracker of spaceflight activity, shows SpaceX had 1,574 working Starlink satellites in orbit before the new group of 60 launched Wednesday. McDowell's table showed the Starlink network had 951 operational spacecraft as of Wednesday, plus hundreds more maneuvering to their final locations in the constellation. The Starlink network is the largest satellite fleet in history, and SpaceX is adding more spacecraft to the expanded constellation to provide global internet service. The completion of the first Starlink shell will enable the network to provide high-speed, low-latency internet service to the low latitudes such as the southern United States. Hold up, come a little closer. Did you hear what I just said? It's coming to Southern Latitudes. That's right, my Southern comrades, you're gonna have Starlink before you know it. Back to the story. The polar orbiting satellites, which will begin launching from Vandenberg Space Force Base later this year, will give the Starlink network complete global coverage. Wednesday's mission used a booster from SpaceX inventory, making its second appearance. The booster, designated B1063, previously launched the Sentinel-6 Michael for Shellac Oceanography Satellite in November from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. SpaceX landed the booster back at Vandenberg after the launch last December and reused it during this launch. The payload shroud on Wednesday launch was also recycled from previous missions. One half of the clamshell-like fairing, which protected the 60 satellites during the first few minutes of flight through the atmosphere, previously flew on four other Starlink missions. It was the first time part of a payload shroud has been launched five times. The other half of the fairing flew on two missions before Wednesday launch. SpaceX recovery team will again try to retrieve the fairing halves from the Atlantic Ocean after they parachute into the sea. Now, you can barely hope to get tired. So Elon and SpaceX continue to dominate, and trust me, the government is noticing. We're now seeing them continue to move from proof of concept to clearly proof of work. They're now increasing their launch schedule, they're really coming out to launching about one a week and we're reusing rocket parts. 
Now, if you remember, the Artemis program put forth a bunch of different goals way back in 2016-17. Elon is not only meeting those goals, he's smashing them. And now, with last week's NASA lunar landing contract in question, you begin to wonder, is Bezos just really bitter because he's sitting there and watching Elon and SpaceX launch over and over and over again? Recover over and over again? Well, he hasn't even reached outer orbit. Are we really surprised to see Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin make a move to argue with the Government Accountability Office that NASA moved the goalpost before its award of the government lander contract? Are we equally not surprised that Elon tweeted, can't get it up, right back to Bezos after he filed the complaint? But things get even a little bit crazier. Bezos ran back to his home state of Washington and engaged Senator Maria Cantwell. What she did was included an amendment to a bill that was on the Senate floor at the time called the Frontier Act, which is basically a bill to bolster technology and research funding. This amendment to this bill would allow for 10 billion additional dollars to be placed towards the lunar landing project and be awarded to another company, of which Blue Origin is more than likely the one that's going to take that contract. Now the amendment sliding in the bill didn't go unnoticed and was fiercely contested, notably by Bernie Sanders arguing, why are we going to use the government money to reward the richest man on earth? It's really a shame too, because the Artemis program really piqued my boyhood wonder about space again. They promised to travel back to the moon and even push further to Mars. And I can't stand now that politicians are getting involved because Jeff Bezos is a little hurt because he's sitting down on the ground watching Elon Musk and SpaceX absolutely dominate him. The original contract was given to SpaceX after they proved not only with a piece of paper and proposal, but with actual working proof of work and proof of concept techniques that they just showed on display last week that they can do this for $2.9 billion. What Senator Cantwell is asking for is an additional $10 billion and that can't be awarded to SpaceX. So what does that mean? It's probably gonna go to either Dianetics, which is doubtful, and more than likely land right in the hands and in the lap of Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin. As reported by The Intercept, Senate preparing 10 billion bailout fund for Jeff Bezos space firm. Now that Jeff Bezos space flight company Blue Origin has lost a multi-billion dollar contract to Elon Musk SpaceX, Congress is prepping the ground for Bezos to win a contract anyway ordering NASA to make not one, but two awards. The order would come through the Endless Frontier Act, a bill to beef up resources for science and technology research that's being debated on the Senate floor this week. An amendment was added to the legislation by Senator Maria Cantwell, a Democrat from Washington State, to hand over 10 billion to NASA, money that would most likely go to Blue Origin, the company that's headquartered in Cantwell's home state. The Bezos Space Company has been competing against SpaceX for a contract to put astronauts on the moon, the first such trip since 1972, but lost the bidding process with a price tag almost twice as much as that as SpaceX. NASA announced a war to Elon Musk's own company last month. Cantwell's measure wouldn't resend the grant to SpaceX, but would create an additional contract that the Bezos Company would be in line to win. A third company, Dynetics, had also bid for the moonshot but the author of the new amendment offers a strong suggestion of which company it's likely to benefit. I think there needs to be redundancy or multiple contractors in case one fails, she told Nielsen at his confirmation hearing. And it has to be clear, this process can't be redundancy later. It has to be redundancy now. The measure has been attached to the Endless Frontier Act as part of a manager's amendment and authorizes $10.032 billion through the year 2026 for the moon program. Authorization alone does not fund the program and Congress would still need to appropriate the money or the executive would need to find other appropriated funds. This bill is currently on the Senate floor and has broad bipartisan support. A procedural vote last week passed by a 71 to 27 margin and the Senate Democratic leaders are eyeing a Thursday vote for the final passage after which it would need to move through the House of Representatives. Now I'm all for competition. I think it's healthy and it's needed for us the consumers to have a healthy marketplace so that we don't get gouged or we don't have to pay a whole bunch 
for a service that's dominated by one monopoly. However, I'm also a big fan of progress. I think that's the big difference between SpaceX and Blue Origin. SpaceX has continued now 100 times to launch rockets. They have now continued to recover parts, which was exactly what the proposal was asking for in the first place. Further, when we're looking at almost 5x the cost by using another provider versus 2.9 billion that SpaceX has bid, I just think it's more examples of government waste. Listen, if Blue Origin or any other company was as close and had this many examples of successful launches, I'd be all for them being in the arena. But we have to move, and we have to move quickly. I understand Cantwell's idea that we can't be retroactive and reward this later. We need to do it at the same time. But she doesn't understand SpaceX is so far ahead, it doesn't matter at this point. Give it to SpaceX, Bezos, do something else, Continue your program, but get off that yacht because right now you're getting your tail kicked. I'm Hill Phantom. Until next time, let's go.